welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch World Cup group stages. Myself and Jason are sat here all weekend to bring you as many yep. of these matches as we possibly can. This next one is the first time we are going to see Team Sweden and Team Slovakia battle it out here. Over three maps, potentially, if we get that far. Yeah, uh, so if you guys just join us uh, and you didn't see the match earlier, we had Finland up against Hungary. Um, Finland is a team of six pro players. Yeah. Sweden is exactly the same. You've got six pro players all on top teams uh, in their roster. It's going to be difficult for Slovakia to, I think, pick up a victory here. Yeah. Uh, but there's always a chance. You never know. So Slovakia is an interesting team because most of it, obviously, a lot of them were selected on their rank. And then even the captain, Blue X, I think, uh, or Blue Star, one of those who was the captains, they also selected the last two players based on their rank as well. Mm. They didn't actually um, have a, a certain preference for it. But Blue X is from one of the top teams in Czechoslovakia, which is a tinkle, tinkle no Farah, I think. So, you know, some strong local presence here as well. I mean, like, and Blue X has been playing, like, play 1.6 and CSGO. And he's played all through those mm. games. So there's a lot of competitive gaming experience on this side of Slovakia, but Sweden is Zebesai, Koko, IDDQD, Zabe, Chips, Hyen, and Tvik. So in this team, obviously, Tvik, IDDQD, going to be playing the DPS. Zebo's flexing in this lineup. Uh, we're going to see Chips and Zave supporting, and Koko will be naturally tanking. Probably it's a, just Reinhardt. It's a reunion, though, of IDDQD, Chips, and Isn't and that the Impulse Tvik. 11 reunion? I was going to say just IDQD reunion. The original reunion. IDQD, yeah. Um, slash into Rogue. Uh, yeah, so Temple of Anubis is our first map. We're actually loaded into the game, so let's drop you straight in. Because this is going to be, I think it's safe to say, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, again, you know, seeing what lineup we're going to have out of Sweden, probably I find interesting as well. They're going to be attacking to start things off here. And of course, so far, if this is what they're going to be going with, I mean, we're going to see that... The, the Tracer Genji comp. On this map, I think it's much better. A bit more mobile than McCree, and Reaper doesn't always have safe ways to access high positions and use his teleport. He can technically get around behind people, but it's not simple. You know what's sad is that actually, back when we did see IDDQD and Tvik together on a Rogue at the uh, TakeOver tournament, it was actually the first European offline tournament that we did have in Overwatch, uh, Tvik was playing Flex. He was playing like a lot of more Zarya. Um, yeah. This is one of the first times um, that we're actually going to see Tvik playing DPS with him. And Tivik in general has switched over to more of a DPS role yeah. in his current team. It so, used to be IDDQD and AKM yeah, playing exactly. DPS roles. When that was we when you could have double McCree, it was disgusting, but it was pretty interesting to watch. It was just <laughs> a lot of flashbangs, a lot of fan hammer. Of course, at the time, fan hammer was inc a lot stronger than it is now. So McCree, was, me and McCree in general was just super good back then. So we often saw the double McCree lineup coming. Genji was far less common. Guys like Linksa would pick it every now and then, but Widow was also popular back then. So a lot has changed since then. A lot of water under the bridge for the Swedish roster, who have all been in teams together at one point or another. But let's see now how it plays out. Obviously, a lot on the plate here for the Slovakian side. They are going to be coming at least with the Junkrat. They've got the Eyeworm on the Mercy, Richard on the Reinhardt. We've of course got the Zarya for Blue X, McCree for Dottie 3D and Blue Star. It's going to be on the Zenyatta. I, I think the lineup of Slovakia is actually not too bad here as well to, to think about it. But the problem is you're up against Sweden who have this really aggressive lineup. They're already fighting over towards the high ground. And with the Krolis oh already being God. taken down, there's like no chance you're going to be able to put up a formidable defense. Because Junkrat needs to sit back and needs to spam my way at you. But the way Sweden just swarmed over that first point just kind of shows you they're here to mean business. Uh, business. Well, no doubt about it. No ultimates were even used in that fight. Koko gets two, Tvik gets two. They just go aggressive. They waste no time. And they're backcapping this one out as well. So they're going to be able to get towards this point very, very quickly. So the setup here for the Slovakians will be very, very important. Will they be able to extend too far around? Doesn't look like it. And it doesn't look like the Swedish roster are going to really go easy on this one at all. Zemosai goes in early, starts things off there. Dragonblade coming in from Tvik as well, who will uh, just be pretty nasty in this position. Blue X is going to fall. Oh my, oh my. That's that's nasty. That's it. That's that's pretty much the map done and dusted. And this team are going to have six minutes and like 56 seconds left in the time bank. The fastest time on this map I've ever seen. Sweden not even really stopping for breath. I don't really think you can get much a, much of a quicker time than that even touch. Dowdy 3D in chat. Well played? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, you can't. I, uh, it was <laughs> a great game, everyone. Maybe a couple a seconds quicker, right? That's about it. There's not much wiggle room, let's just say that. Um, Do you still get five minutes added for the first point take or four? No, I think it's on a three now, actually. Really? I'm no, messing with some not, insecurity issues in my life, but thank you all for playing with me. <laughs> 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 the new GG easy spam. Um, no, I think it's three minutes. I think they actually reduced it quite a bit. Or is it maybe that's just a payload no, maps? it can't be because there was six minutes 56 left on the clock. And then if you start with four and then you only get three added, you only had seven in the first place. Okay, so then you get four. But on payloads, yeah. it was taken down to three. So I the map, the whole map literally went for like a little bit over a minute. Like a minute and five seconds, I guess. 
That's pretty nasty. It was quick. It was, it was definitely quick. And, and now we're going to need to see the side of Slovakia who are going to change things up and actually put Blue Star on Anna. Uh, keep Iworm over on the Lucio. But Necrolis, uh, who was playing the Junker at the beginning, is going to be playing Genji this time. So this comp, it takes a little bit more time to actually get going. I, what, what Sweden had before with the Winston, the Tracer, and the Genji, uh, and the Zarya, is just, it's so quick. It just snowballs so fast. But Slovakia needs a little bit of a wind-up because you need that Anna ultimate ready to go. And assuming who you want to put on, Richard or Necrolis, you have to wait for, their, for them, well, for Necrolis to get his ultimate up or Richard to get in a good position. So it'll take a little bit of time for Slovakia to take this point, I would assume, just looking past the actual names of the players. But again, it's Sweden. If we actually take into, into account the actual players of the team, it's really hard to deal with that. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, Team Composition Wise are going to be using the Ana as well, but it's like an Ana without, well, I assume if Blue Star stays at this, without the, without the tanks. So, it'll be a little bit interesting to see, see if that's actually going to be the plan here. Whoa, 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 Blue Star, what have you got for us, mate? Got to, they're going to come in with the McCree as well. So, yeah, this is an interesting comp to throw Ana in as your support and not play triple tank, but I mean, oh my lord, Dottie just got smashed there as well. Tvik really laying down the hurt. He's uh, really getting these grenades on. You can see Worm is getting taken down very, very low. Still, those Slovakia get in here without taking too much damage. They're going to go straight towards the high ground, but okay, now the damage starts happening there. Chips high and gets himself two kills. Tvik as well getting himself a couple. And yeah, this is going to end up being, for the most part, a wipe. I believe, I Worm, I believe. No, I don't believe anymore. He was actually just ball riding around, trying to buy some time. But with him dying a little bit later on than his team, that means he's going to have to wait another 10 seconds for them to actually force an engagement here. But again, this is what we expected anyways. Savaki needs some time to wind up. They need that Ana ultimate, which is now at 85%. Uh, but most importantly now with the situation, with how Sweden's holding, they need to actually pull them off this high ground to fight on equal footing to allow this Ana boost to be successful if we want to put it on a Reinhardt. Oh, ho, 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 Coco comes in from downtown with the charge on Blue Star. He had no idea that was happening. And why that's important is because he was so close to his Ana boost. In fact, he now has it there as well. We saw Tvik get a couple kills at the beginning. Uh, he essentially just cut through the most part of the Slovakian lineup there off camera. So, yeah, definitely want to keep an eye on, but it's very, very hard to decide who we should be watching here because all of these players are so deadly. Even IDDQD, we're not even mentioning the fact that he's on his McCree, but obviously he is pertinent here as he is ferocious. You know, I can just close my eyes and I can tell who's playing the McCree just by how many headshots I'm hearing out of this man. Uh, IDQD towards the back, gonna be one for the Deadeye. Won't really hit anything with it, but nonetheless, they're just still forcing and controlling Zavakia. Graviton Surge comes in just to wipe up the entire fight. They're not allowing them to even get off an engagement that Zavakia wants with the Nano Boost. And they even switch Richard over to the D.Va, so they don't have the Reinhardt anymore, which means there's a lot of pressure on uh, Necrolis now to actually make this Dragon's Blade do work. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, you're going to... Who do you want a Nano Boost on this team? Probably Necrolis, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it has to be now. Rich, so they had, they had Reinhardt initially with Richard, um, but they're not being allowed to really fight in an equal footing. We're having Sweden's on the ground in front of them. So if you Nano Boost Reinhardt, he's not going to do anything because they're above him. But you do a Genji with Dragon Blade available. Um, he could almost single handedly take him off this point. Just depends if he gets trapped or not or oh. bursted by a Riptire. Well, he's going to go in now with the Dragon Blade as well, but that Transcendence is going to shut him down. Riptire went somewhere. I think it was actually killed early on the piece because I can't see what Vic really did to it there. But yes, this is... Um, have you seen Slovakia get a kill yet in this round? Have we seen that? No. I don't think so, no. So, again, you know, they're, they're struggling to even, to even find one target at the moment. I mean, look, you've got Chips as healing, Zebo can give shields, and obviously Tvik and IDDQD are going to make themselves scarce. So, there's no easy pickups here on the side of Sweden. The positioning is ultra safe, even with Necrolis going in so deep. Immediately, the entire league of Sweden, they're so well coordinated, they just turn on him and pick him up. That Anna ult has been sitting here for a couple minutes now, still not used because Blue Star just hasn't found the opening. It's actually going to go on towards the Diva. Well, I've seen crazy things, I guess, in my life. Now the Graviton surge to follow it up, but Blue Star falls down. Richard trying to make things happen now with a diva, trying to at least get on towards Chips High and possibly the first kill of the game going over towards him. Now pressuring further on towards the point here. But Sweden looked in to respond. You see the bunny blaster coming out now there. Good little self-destruct. I did a cutie actually falls to that one. So nice little work. But again, Zave and Co looking to clean up here. It's just Richard really kept on his own and again gets desuited. Again gets taken down. Coco fell there to Blue Star, so a couple of kills coming in for the Slovakians, but they've got 40 seconds. To at least get that first point. Then they're going to get a time extension, but they're already obviously massively behind in time bank. But let's cross that bridge when we get to it, Jason. Yeah, Blue Star, I mean, he's still trying to sit to the back. Maybe they switch things up because the Nana Boost didn't work on a Richard. You you could obviously put on uh, to Necrolis, and that's why he wasn't too afraid, I guess, to put on a Richard because he still had time anyways to build it up quickly. But I did a cutie now, and Tracer trying to hold on to this one. Even a Graviton Surge being thrown in. Look at Tevik. Look at the damage he's doing with them all so clumped filthy. together. Yeah, and they're falling one by one there again. 
you know, this is un understandable. Sweden have a very strong composition for this. I just, I don't really know what you, value you get from this Ana in this case. You know, look, Dragon Blade comes out, you get shut down. And even if you're a Nana Boost Genji, you're still going to take so much damage from this team who hit all their shots. The individual is so strong that you're going to have a bad time. That's going to be the first map done there. Very convincing performance from the Swedes. They are looking like front runners in their group, and I'm not really surprised at yeah, all. I was going to say, I think we're, I think most people out there are going to be saying, or at least per having them to be the, probably the, the better team <clears throat> or the team you're looking through to get through without much problem. Yeah. Rough as guts, as we say back home. And it was, uh, again, Tvik. Well, we saw what this man was able to do on a few occasions there as well. I think the very beginning was about him on the attacking side. This is that first push. Obviously, there was only a first push. Going in, no one really paying too much attention there. And he gets onto the key targets. He gets towards the Junkrat, the Mercy. He's following this, I guess, flow chart of priorities so perfectly. And obviously, when he was done, Slovakia, well, no one was standing around there at the end of the day. Yeah, and you have to wonder is, or potentially can things change coming to the next map? Because it will be, don't tell me, Numbani. I don't know if it's going to get much different. Nabani is definitely one of the harder maps to attack. It's a lot easier to defend on that first point. Um, you can obviously compare it a little bit to Temple of Anubis there. Um, actually, we can't tell them to start yet. Uh, uh, yeah, so obviously Nabani is a little bit more difficult when it comes to attacking. Uh, Temple of Anubis, I think it's like not pretty similar. Here. Yeah, he was. He just left. You didn't see him? Yeah, he got kicked. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, pff, it'll be tough, I think. I, I did a Q doesn't even know the map pool. <laughs> okay, the map pool is a bit different though, it changes. It's Numbani, that's fine. Sorry guys, just communicating with you guys in game. So, oh, yep. uh, okay, look, we, we have, this could be a really quick game. And the reason why I say that is because we actually have Sweden starting in the defense, right? So theoretically, if Sweden started on the attack, we'd probably see them push through the whole map, I would say, in, in, in a good sort of circumstances, unless we saw something quite special from Slovakia. Um, but now the way it happens is that if Sweden full hold this first point, all they need to do is take the first point on the attacking side. So that's uh, yeah, pretty straightforward for them. So it should be a fairly quick one. And we'll see. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, the Slovakian team wants to play Anna. They don't want to play a triple tank comp. Um, There's nothing wrong with Anna. Like, yeah, no, that's what I'm about. You don't, I wanna, you don't need to run triple tank. That's why I'm, that's what I'm just about to ask you, though, as well. Like, is this really, is it really robust, though? Is it really robust against comps we're seeing at the moment? I don't necessarily think you need to run triple tank, uh, like, 100%. Like, obviously, it's not bad, but uh, at the same rate, like, so we have to look at for different different angles, I guess. It's, right. it's Team Sweden. Is any comp really going to work against them unless you're, you know, already in the competitive pro scene? Well, I'm just pressing um, you in general. Like, is, like, playing Anna in this manner, we saw it sort of happen earlier on with teams trying to break through. It depends where the defense holds, I think. So if if, if Sweden's going to hold on the high ground here, like with majority of their team, which with, uh, with I Need to Kill and Chips playing on these two heroes, I don't think they're going to, then it's not bad because a Nana booster like Reinhardt pushing through can obviously shove them off and take a lot of damage, not to mention be able to keep them healed in time. Uh, and that alone is a big enough threat. But teams don't really hold that position anymore. They have, I think, IDDQD and Ships playing all across the actual side on the high ground. And maybe even a little bit of protection from Zebosai, if I'm not mistaken. No, is not there. Yeah, it's just them two. So you have to attack in two fronts. And Richard and Necrolus have to come together, actually, to dismantle this right side. If they can push IDDQD and Ships together and kill them, then they have a good start. Well, Necros just got smashed by IDDQD from the high ground there, so that's obviously not a great start. Without the Genji on this first push, definitely going to hurt. To pick there picks up uh, L Iworm, sorry, and that's uh, IDDQD there again. Just a long range game working quite well for him. He keeps insisting to me he's a super aggressive McCree, but every time I watch IDDQD, he's just got this super safe position, kind of like AKM. I don't know, I'm not, I, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen him, I guess, since the Atlantic Showdown, so it's hard to say. I'm trying to think, what could maybe Slovakia do? I don't actually, it's like Slovakia doesn't have really. Okay, they have an interesting composition, actually, because the, uh, the, McCree, the McCree kind of doesn't fit, necessarily. Because um, if you're pushing up the left side with this comp, and assuming you're saying Necklace and Richard to the right, what's protecting the McCree? It's a, it's a Zarya, and that's just not going to be enough. Um, but maybe when it comes time to ultimate speed up, like maybe Blue Star pairing that onto Richard, the Nano Boost, will be enough, because it knocks IDD, QD, and ships off this high ground, but... Are they going to have any momentum to make that happen? Because not to Vic towards the back. He's got Dragon Blade, but you can see he doesn't even want to use it because he's confident enough to wipe him without it. Yeah, I mean, he's not really being focused, is he, though? He's able to be in the back line and spend a lot of time there and sort of not garner too much attention at all. 
So this this high ground being held so well, this is such a hard map to play against a team with a, a solid defensive composition because it's already hard geographically or topographically to play into as an attacker anyway. You need a really well coordinated team composition. Like I, I think if you go like a diva instead of Zarya here to get on the high ground with Genji and and Winston, yeah. then you you kill IDQD, you kill Chips. And Zebasai and Zebasai is the only one who can even get across the way to actually protect him, or well, him and Tavik, and that leaves like Zave off to the side, not able to really do too much. I don't know. I, I feel like they need to punish one side because Sweden are trying to fight on two fronts, and they're really they're not really separated because it's this is Nabon, this is how you always play it. But they're separated enough that ideally they should be able to take down one or two of these people. We've got some big ults up now as well uh, for the side of Sweden. We've got five, in fact, and Zay will have his in a moment. So pushing into a six ult team, there's no real need to use him uh, for the most part here. I mean, look at that. Dotty 3D can't even get his dead eye off. This is nasty. Graviton Surge comes in. But I mean, there's no one really there to be sucked into it. It's only Richard now with the Primal Rage eventually gets picked up. Necrolis, well, just fell. And Blue X spawning in. So another solid hold now. There's less time to attack first points on hybrid maps than there was in the past. It used to be five minutes, now it's four. So that kind of makes it even harder here. I've got a minute 20 to get it going. Yeah, I mean, I think the map pool just doesn't really so suit Reinhardt. them too well. Um, is it Mbani? And you're up against, like, one of the best teams representing the entirety of Europe, potentially. Uh, yeah, they're switching Reinhardt over. They're trying to take control of this left side, but if you leave IDQD cutie free, he's just going to tear your team apart, even to Vic with a Dragon Blade here. Um, he picks up four kills. But yeah, like you're, you're attacking on this side, right? But who's dealing with IDQD cutie and chips to the side? No yeah. one. You look it's at them, they're 100 HP. Attack. And yeah, IDQD just doesn't miss shots that often. You can't count on him to play bad to actually win this fight. This is like McCree heaven as well. I'm stuck. That's awkward. This is like McCree heaven. I'm stuck again. That's even more awkward. This stuck. is like McCree heaven because you can look. I mean, if you're under, if you're on attended and six players push up onto this ledge, it's like the perfect range. Perfect range for McCree to do damage from. That mid range is where he thrives, and that's what Slovakia are allowing IDQD to do. Arguably one of the best. Uh, McCree plays in the world, really. Like, definitely top five, I'd say that. There's quite a few, but... Anyway, so, Soundbearer coming in here as well. Tafik actually gets stunned going towards the back line, but this doesn't really seem to deter him that much. He can still lay damage down, messing with Dotty 3D, or messing him up, should I say. Then I comes out. I did the cuties happy to get Eye Worm there as well, just to pick off for free. You're more than happy. You know you're probably more deadly DPS-wise, actually, when you're not ulting, but it's a free kill for you, essentially. And four seconds left on the clock there. There's no one here left on the side of Slovakia. Richard wants to press forward, but he isn't going to get close enough to the point to even put a scratch on it. And it's going be a full hold here from Team Sweden, making a very strong statement here on the second map. And I'm not really surprised. These guys are just stupidly good at the game, and they spent, between them, the top team experience, everyone is from a top team, you know? Coco, Zave is from LG. Coco is, of course, from um, Envious. Chips Hein, Envious, Zebesai, Misfits, IDDQD, Fnatic, Tvik, of course, Rogue. So this is uh, the pedigree of the players you're dealing with. And the thing about Overwatch is that if you don't, if you can't pound for pound stack up against the enemy team, then you need to come up with a strategy that surprises him. And if you can't surprise him, if they've seen everything in the book, you're running out of ways to get advantages. You're sort of running out of ways to carve out a niche on the map or actually start to get ahead in any way, shape, or form. It's tough. I do apologize as well to the viewers that are watching. Uh, the score was updated. It said 0-0. Zero, zero. It's actually 1-0 for Sweden since they did win on Temple of Anubis. Uh, taking the first two points in two minutes, basically, and then folding on the first... Uh, so this is potentially the last map here between these two teams, uh, between Sweden and Slovakia. But let's see, Sweden, we don't have to worry about them on attack just yet. It's more about the defensive side of Slovakia and what they're going to go with them. I mean, defensive Anna, I think, okay, the thing it's is, like, the same there's, there's a difference between running defensive Anna and, and it realizing it's bad and also being limited by hero pool. And, and playing it, like being forced to kind of play it, or at the same time, like trying to hope that you can make a, a player on your team who's already good even better by helping a system. I, I don't really feel good necessarily about the Ana on defense yep. because they're coming to you and you're the one that wants to force the attack with the Nana boost. But it's pretty, it's but pretty it's, clear it's to what see. they're going to have to use. It's pretty clear to see that a lot of these picks are sort of um, comfort picks. We've got gold there, no gold there. Uh, a few players have those, those gold weapons, so you can see what they're, they're comfortable playing. The problem is, that's what you probably should do, though. If you're playing up against a team like Sweden, you want to play to your strengths and play what you're comfortable with. And that is, if that is what you're comfortable with, then you're going to have the best chance of actually managing to win out. So, now, uh, okay, this composition is really interesting, Jason. Five tanks. Any comment? No. No, this is just <laughs> them being confident. Like, there's, there's really nothing to say about it. It's, oh it's them knowing they're probably going to win the match and then playing whatever they want to for fun. There's no real analyzing this. Because there's not six tanks in the game, that's why they're playing five. Well, 
To be to fair, fix on the Lucio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Just take a lesson from time. But yeah, I must be out of time his book there as well. So the first attack is actually unsuccessful, by the way, for Team Sweden. This comp is quite weird. It's very aggressive, very divey. And now they get back on towards the point. If Slovakia doesn't have a Reaper, then there's just no way they're going to take Sweden. Star. I mean, they didn't do it anyways, but even Koko if Sweden just, got ultimates. Yeah. Koko just got smashed, though, by Necrolis. He reflected his right click back at him. I don't know where zebesai has gone, but uh, he's gone very, very deep here as well. This is just going to force the enemy team away. It's going to guarantee an easy take for Sweden, and that is it. If you blink, you'll miss it. Sweden win that one out 2-0. and zero. Slovakia, unfortunately, not able to put much of a scratch on them. But for Slovakia and for fans of Slovakia, do not despair. It is a tough group. There is a, obviously Sweden is a tough it's team true. to face up against, but there are teams, there are other possibilities for wins to come up in this particular group. Um, I mean, we've got Turkey, we've got Denmark and Romania. So Slovakia still has a few other opponents where they can sort of try and take the game to and see what they can do about them. Well, speaking of Slovakia, actually they're our next game. Yeah, at 7 p.m., right? Yep. Against Romania. Yep. So, yeah, fear not. Um, fellow friends from the Balkans. We will be seeing a little bit more of these guys later on tonight. I guess Romania as well. We should be a really interesting matchup. I don't know a lot about the Romanian side, same as Slovakia. So, you know, it'll be good to see how that one sort of plays out. But, ladies and gents, today the way things are sort of working, it's not a constant stream. It's not constant content. Yep. Because these teams have scheduled their games sort of independently of us, and we've just sort of come in and said, okay, we want to we want to cast this, we want to show everyone this, we want to show everyone this. So we work around them. They choose when they want to play. We jump in and try and catch us the games yep. that we can. Now, the next block of games happens at sort of 6.30. So if we take the 6.30 games, we can't do the seven ones, and we have a bit of a clash there. So we're actually going to wait until 7 yep. p.m. So we can cast Slovakia versus Romania. That's two hours away, or well, at least at this stage. It's an hour. An hour and a half. And a half. It's about an hour and a half away, wow. guys. Hour so and a half. we'll okay. have to bring you guys way on back towards this stream afterwards. So go and relax, go and put your feet up. Go and check the Overwatch subreddit as well. Because you're looking for some of the other streams or some of the other language streams. The post about the World Cup groups and the qualification and the games itself and the schedule is posted on the Overwatch subreddit. It's sticky up the top. You can't miss it. It also lists some of the alternate language streams that you can find who will be doing some of the other games. Or if you're too lazy to do that, type exclamation point schedule in chat and the link's there for you. So you, can't, you don't have an excuse to not do it. Um, but actually, before we do head to break, though, let's look at the groups and kind of how they pan out so far. Remember, not all teams have played games, and not all teams have played the same amount of games. So we're obviously going to see a couple of holes here as uh, Baltic and Caspian Sea, uh, the team led by Valataja has yet to play a match, so as well good. as Germany. These two teams are actually going to go head-to-head -to -head tomorrow, which is one of the matches we'll be casting. So it's Internet Hulk versus Valataja. It's going to be an insane game. But so far, Poland is leading with 1-0 yeah. scoreline at three points. I think Ireland lost to Poland. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. Ireland beat South Africa? Yeah, so... Yeah, Ireland lost to Poland to beat South Africa is basically the way that group's okay. gone so far. So, a few people wanted to see a bit of South Africa. I know that. I don't think we have any of their games today, uh, but you should check some of the alternate language streams as well. I don't Keep know if they've actually scheduled more than, like, one or two of their games. Yeah, I mean, what we cast is based um, on what the teams actually exactly. schedule. So, we, we are, we're sort of at their mercy there. But, I mean, Group B... Finland up there. Hungary, of course, had to be the first to go up against them. I mean, Iceland, uh, Greece, and the UK are in that group. So that'll be really interesting to see who takes those sort of top spots. This Norway, France, actually. That's going to be a big game. I think it's tomorrow. We're casting that one tomorrow, I think. Are we? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I think it's probably like the first game of the day then. Might be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, Alpha we'll, Cast we'll is an old you. man, so he has to go to bed early. So he schedules <laughs> his games at the crack of dawn. Well, to be fair, he I, I know he gets the whip cracked on him here at ESL in terms of in his department. So I'm not surprised he has to, he's <laughs> used to getting up quite early. They, they're busy guys here. For the people wondering, by the way, so I, I want to go down to this group, Group E, Switzerland might actually be forfeiting their all their games. Uh, just to update you guys, I saw people on Reddit saying we want to see Switzerland there might not be a chance to actually watch them at all. They might have to forfeit every match. Uh, I can't really get the details because I don't fully know the details, but we'll update you obviously when we can. Um, Italy, though, picking up a win against Bulgaria. Well, so either it was a default win over Switzerland because I believe this was a forfeit, or they beat Bulgaria. To be fair, I feel good about Italy coming into this because, I mean, they've, they've had a couple teams that we've seen a lot actually in the... In exactly, the right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Who... I thought were well, decent, to mm. be honest with you. Like, actually, you know, up there with Reason and some of those maybe sort of more tier two teams, perhaps. But there's a lot of good players. It really depends on who got voted in. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not really sure. I don't know how many Italians really get into watching the, um, the the pro teams in that region. But either way, then Czech Republic already up two match two wins to none there. So they've dealt with Austria and Serbia. This is a re actually. So this is a really insane group actually because Austria and, and Czech Republic were really close, yeah. and we saw really good play out of both teams. But the twist comes in when you have Team Spain, led by Winghaven. I think, is he led by, yeah, is it led by Winghaven? Yeah, as well. Yeah, Harry Hug, Bromas, Winghaven. Um, are you missing anyone? It's not Toxkin, is it? 
He's not on that team. I don't remember. I don't, uh, I just, I don't want to forget like a name. Also, Team Benelux as well. Yeah, too um, easy there. Yeah, too easy's in there. I think Mort. Someone said Mort is in there. I think they've had changed a few players as well. But I mean, yeah. not sure. So you have like pro players on these two teams, but like Austria and Czech Republic, I could legitimately see potentially beating one of these teams. So this is definitely like the group of death. It's going to be a lot of close matches in that one. So that's what we're looking at for the rest of the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you do want to know what's happening. Exclamation mark schedule in the chat. It will take you straight towards the schedule. And you can also check it out over at the Overwatch uh, uh, Reddit. Also, the competitive Overwatch subreddit, it's there it's as on well. It's on both. It's on both. Can't Stick miss it on it. both. How about that? Anyway, we're going to be back in about an hour and a half. It will be Romania taking on Slovakia, which will be a much more interesting game. Let's see if Slovakia can lift and take it to the Romanians. We'll see you then.